Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, around 1 billion people, almost 15% of the world's population, survive in poverty, lacking the income and capabilities to live with dignity. Poverty imposes massive human suffering. It is the most pervasive violation of human rights. It is also the root cause of socioeconomic instability and of most political and security problems across the world. It is thus only right that poverty eradication is the first among UN sustainable development goals. Excellencies, over the past 30 years, poverty had visibly declined. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered the worst global recession in over a century, 100 million people are likely to be pushed back into extreme poverty. A decade's development could be reversed. The COVID virus does not discriminate, but it is the poor and vulnerable who have suffered the most from it. In Pakistan, we have been able to control the virus through our strategy of smart lockdowns. My government has done its utmost to shield the poor and the vulnerable. Despite our financial difficulties, we implemented a $1.25 billion package to deliver emergency cash to over 15 million families, covering over 100 million people. My government is implementing a multi-sectorial poverty alleviation program, ESAS, which means compassion in Urdu. It is the largest poverty eradication program in Pakistan's history. My government is committed to reducing poverty from 24.3% to 19% by 2023. My aim is to create an Islamic welfare state based on the principles of riyasat e Medina through inclusive, equitable growth and economic modernization. Excellencies, as the UN Secretary General has observed, Inequality is the hallmark of our times. Today, the 26 richest people in the world own as much wealth as half the world's population does. The richer countries have mobilized over $10 trillion to recover from the COVID crisis. The developing countries, on the other hand, are struggling to find even a small fraction of the $2.5 trillion they need. Apart from the direct attack on poverty, we need to address its systemic causes. At the national and international levels, the structures of finance, production and trade must be made fair and equitable. The exploitation of the resources of the poor countries must stop. The illicit flows of fruits of corruption and crime must be halted and the stolen assets returned to the countries of origin and developing countries must be helped to recover from the COVID crisis, to realize the SDGs and to ward off the impacts of climate change. The financial resources needed by the developing countries must be mobilized through debt relief, which I called for last April. The creation of new special drawing rights and expanded official development assistance. The realization of SDGs can be accelerated, especially through major investments in sustainable infrastructure, in renewable energy, transport, housing, water and sanitation. New technologies must be mobilized and the digital divide bridged to enable developing countries to leapfrog into a modern development paradigm. I'm confident that this important event will contribute significantly to a collective fight against global poverty and the promotion of SDGs. I thank you.